What pedagogical implications do you feel the DALN has? Well, the, the whole object of the DALN is to be a, um, a resource that can be used in multitudinous ways by different teachers in different classes for different purposes. Um, so the, um, there are no, there's no one set of pedagogical outcomes for the DALM. Different classes can use it, different disciplines can use it, different teachers can use it, um, different levels of instruction can use it. And I think the, the uh, best um, description of what's been done pedagogically with the DALN is in Michael Harker and Katie Comer's 2015 article in Computers and Composition about um, where they where they surveyed people who use the DALN in their classes and talked about the strengths and weaknesses of that use. Krista Bryson has also um, done an article on the DALN and then there have been dissertations done on the DAL and Deborah Kazawa's work on the digital archive uh, and especially the work she did with GBLTQ narratives uh, is useful. And then the uh, Computers and Composition Digital Press book that Louie and Scott and I and all the contributors did called The Stories That Speak to Us uh, provides something like 15 or 16 different curated exhibits of how those narratives can be used uh, both in and around classes and classrooms. Uh, so I think there's so many of these different examples. Um, people could uh, go to Google Scholar, use uh, DALN and find a lot of pedagogical description. There's also a book that uh, Ben McCorkle, Michael Harker, and Katie Comer are working on uh, aimed at the Computers and Composition Digital Press, and it will be a born digital book. And it will look specifically at how the DALN is used in different classes. So there's um, plenty of examples for people to dig into in the scholarly world.